Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit guide us, point us in the direction of truth today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Acts 15, a little bit of repeat. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the matter of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Uh, now, some uh, many Jews uh, had a difficult time letting go in this transitional period, this transition from the dispensation of law to the dispensation of grace, letting go of the Mosaic system. Uh, now, uh, I believe we will see saved people uh, who struggle with certain things even today. A lot of people struggle in legalism and uh, they may be saved. Some may not be saved. Some may be relying on their own good works. Uh, but I've seen uh, people who are saved and not saved struggle with the idea of legalism. Uh, even in my walk, uh, I struggled with that for a time and many people uh, have different things that we need to learn uh, by studying God's word. Uh, continuing on verse two, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So they're going to have a meeting. They're going to have uh, really a council of the church about uh, law versus grace or law versus liberty. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and that caused great joy unto all the brethren. Uh, and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose a certain sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to be to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, these are Christians. It says they believed. And that's one thing I always uh, notice and notice more and more, especially going through Acts. It says uh, there are those that believed. And I believe we have believers here in these Pharisees, uh, but they're saying you have to keep the law of Moses. So we're going to try to answer that question. Now, Galatians 2.15 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now, if you take that last part, there has never been anyone who has been justified by the law, by keeping the law. And all you have to do is say, well, if you were justified by keeping the law, you would have had to keep it perfectly. But to offend in one point of law makes you guilty of all. That's what James 2.10 says. Uh, so as soon as you told a lie, you broke the perfection of the law. I firmly believe when Moses came down off the uh, Mount Sinai and he saw the people of Israel sinning, they were in all sorts of uh, grotesque sin. He smashed the Ten Commandments. And that's a picture that when we don't have the perfection of God, that man couldn't do it. In the dispensation of law, the law wasn't given. It says in Galatians 3.24, and Galatians uh, is where this council was held, actually. And uh, we should study Galatians more thoroughly in conjunction with Acts 15. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to focus on Acts 15, 1 to 12 today. And uh, Galatians addresses uh, the idea that man is not justified uh, by the law. Galatians 3.24, it says, Wherefore, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Uh, but uh, once we have been justified by faith, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now, that doesn't mean we just sin anytime we want, but we're no longer under the law because to be under the law uh, is where someone is uh not saved. Uh, you're under the law. That's what's going to, that's what's going to judge you. Okay. Uh, verse six, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. So here they have the meeting of the church. And when they had been, when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and he said unto them, men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now, remember, Peter had witnessed to Cornelius and he saw Gentiles believe. He had the vision about uh, where God said, go now, rise and eat. What God hath made clean, uh, we're not going to call defiled. 
Okay, verse 8, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost, and, and in receiving the Holy Ghost, they, they, didn't, they weren't keeping the law. And verse 9, And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There won't be anyone in heaven boasting in their own good works. It's not Jesus Christ plus good works. It is by faith alone in Christ alone that people are saved. Now, again, that doesn't mean we go on sinning, that we won't do that. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God and put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? And we're going to end there today, actually, in verse uh, 10. You know, he's saying we're not going to put that yoke of bondage back upon them. Uh, they were supposed to be justified by faith, but they uh, went on thinking that they could be saved by the law, and that was their mistake. Uh, so hopefully we're...